We're going to look at how to create a box plot. And one of the more nitpicky details of box plot is how we identify outliers. And we're going to talk about how to do that as well. The quick and dirty of a box plot is you use your calculator, punch all these numbers in, get the one variable stats, and find your five number summary. The minimum, the quarter one, median, quarter three, and max. Your calculator just tells you these things. And now what you do with those is you plot uh, each of them on a number line. I always draw a number line first because it makes sure that all of your values are spaced out appropriately. So your minimum four is around here. Quarter one, nine, instead of giving it a dot, we're going to give it a bar, a line, vertical line. Median, 10, vertical line. Quarter three, 14, vertical line and max 22 a dot. So the min and max are getting dots, the rest are getting these lines. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little box around the vertical lines so that we form this box here with a line in it. And then we have a whisker, a tail going all the way from the far dot to the box. And you'll see that mine is not perfectly straight here, but the basic idea is identifying your five number summary and plotting each of those values in such a graph. So I'll just connect all of these here. Now reading a box plot is just going the opposite direction. So this is the plot I just drew, a little bit uh, prettier than my first one. Uh, and the big idea is that each of the quartiles, I'll highlight a quartile, each of the fourths, this is one fourth, this is one fourth, this is one fourth, this is one fourth. Each of the fourths hold a quarter or a fourth of the distribution. They're not all equally spaced. It's based on the numbers that we put in in the first place. So if we go back to our list of numbers, you'll notice that uh, this four is kind of far away from quarter one, nine, but there's a bunch of numbers crunched in here between nine and ten. That can happen, and what the box plot shows you is how the different numbers are kind of squished or crunched together. These are farther apart. This 22 is farther apart from the third quarter of 14. The 9 and 10 are very close. The 10 and 14 are a little bit farther. But in each of these different sections, one-fourth of our data in our list can be found. Outliers is a little bit trickier. How far away does a value have to be before you would consider it to be an outlier. And what somebody had defined at one point was this rule of one and a half times the IQR, one and a half times the interquartile range. So if the interquartile range is this middle area from quarter one to quarter three, take that times one and a half. So another half and you get this kind of purple bar that I drew. When you figure out what one and a half IQRs is, you tack that on to the left side and you say, okay, anything bigger than that is going to be an outlier. Well, this four is within that range, so we're actually good. No outlier there. You take that one and a half IQRs over here, and 22, ooh, that might be out of the range. So we might want to check for that one. So we can do some more detailed calculations and figure out exactly how far away one and a half IQRs is to see if that 22 is an outlier. Before we get too much into the details of number crunching, remember that this one and a half IQRs is kind of a made up rule. Someone just decided that one and a half IQRs was going to define an outlier. There's nothing hard and fast that says that that always has to be the case, but as a general rule in statistics, you'll see that come up quite a bit. So the quick calculations now are quarter one and quarter three. Let's find those. It's nine and 14. Then we figure out our IQR. It's taking 14 minus nine, the third quarter minus the first quarter, and we get an IQR of five. Once we know that we have our five, we take one and a half times five, and we subtract that from where we started down here. So we take our nine, our first quarter, and we go below it one and a half IQRs worth. So 1.5 times our IQR of five. 
the way the calculations fall then, so 9 minus 1.5 times 5 is 9 minus 7.5, which is 1.5. Any number in this list less than 1.5 would be considered an outlier. Fortunately, there are no numbers less than 1.5 in our list, so no outliers on the low end. Up on the high end, we have 14 as our third quartile, and we're going to tack on an extra 1.5 IQRs on the high end. So IQR is 5, 1.5 times that is going to get added on. So 1.5 times 5 on top of the 14 we started with is going to give us 21.5. So any number more than 21 and a half is an outlier. In this case, we have the number 22 in our list, so 22 would be an outlier. If you're struggling with how the numbers all played out here, let's go back to the visual real quick. One and a half IQR. So an IQR was this middle five here, and one and a half times that is seven and a half. Seven and a half tacked onto the end of this is gonna put us at 21.5, 22 is a little bigger than that, so we're going to say that 22 is considered an outlier. It's too far away from that middle box. On the low end, 1.5 IQR has brought us down to 1.5, and we don't have any numbers that small, so no outliers on the low end. To adjust how we draw our box plot, knowing that this 22 is considered an outlier, what we're going to do is just leave a dot out there and we're going to go to our next highest value of 17, which is not an outlier, and we'll scale down our graph to look like this. So our final box plot, can, when we include outliers and consider outliers important, is going to have our upper whisker stop at 17, and then the 22, which we consider an outlier, is just going to be a lone dot. This way we can see this is where most of our data falls, and then the very extreme data falls way out here.